Kind of intimidating, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. Leaves me intimidated, afraid, worried. Easy to just go, ah, you know, we'll, we'll get to that one day. Sometime I'm sure I'll find the right moment to actually do those things. And I gotta be honest, you have good reason. If those are the words that are in front of you, if those are the words that you're pondering, you have good reason to be afraid. Because really, you know, being in that vigilant state, we know that the body can only be in a vigilant state for a short period of time, it starts to wear you down. And to be honest, defending is never as much fun as offense. No, I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> offense is always more fun than defense, right? Being the one who is proactive rather than reactive, all those things we know, okay? I'm not saying that any of us are ever offensive, right? But we don't like to defend. And then finally, this whole thing of when people make demands of you, though, that's, that's not happy. That's not what we want in our life. We want to feel like we have freedom, not that people are making demands on us. But you'll notice. You'll notice that I skip seven words. You'll notice that I skip seven words that our minds tend to skip because they're at the end of the sentence or because I, I don't know why. And I've got to be honest with you, I've read this passage a number of times in my life, in my life, and I'm sure I skipped those seven words almost every time until this time, when I, when I read those seven words and I said, for the hope that is in you. For the hope that is in you. See, that's what the accounting is about. For the hope that is in you. You have to understand the context. This is being written by Peter to people who are out giving witness to a world that doesn't want to hear what they have to say. Giving witness to a world where they're being persecuted by Jewish authorities, people like Saul, who becomes Paul, who is out there taking people back in chains and, and putting people to death. People are being put in prison for their faith. People are dying for their faith. And so, yeah, this is an ugly situation that Peter's writing toward. But he tempers that with those seven words. And accounting for the hope that is in you. And as I read those words, and as I saw those words, for the first time in a new light, I realized something. That somehow, because we've been focused on those words defend, and focused on those words uh, about being ready, and when someone demands it of you, we've gotten kind of stuck in this place where we think we've got to be able to explain it correctly. Okay? I went through catechism. I memorized those verses. I know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, kind of forgot, right? And, and, and I'm sure the pastor could say it better than me. Well, maybe not if he's having a bad Sunday, right? I, I mean, we have those thoughts. They go through our heads. Somehow, I'm supposed to say it right. Somehow, I'm supposed to get it right. Somehow, intellectually, I'm supposed to understand all of this. And that's because those are the words we're focused on. But that's not what the text says. The text says, be prepared. The text says you're going to be in defensive posture because this is a situation where people are persecuting you. But then it says, be ready to give an accounting for the hope that is in you. That's not a defense. When I get to talk about hopeful things, when I get to talk about the things that excite me, the things that I enjoy, it's a totally different conversation than when I'm trying to defend something from people who are demanding of me. That's what Peter's getting at, is that there is this hope inside of you. It's a hope that comes from knowing that Jesus came and died and was raised again so that you would not face death. That Jesus came and took all of our sins and all of our mistakes and all of those times when we were horrible and he took them to the cross so that God would pardon abundantly. That's the hope we have in Jesus. But I have good news for you. I have good news for you because... There's more to the hope than just that. You see, Peter's writing from this really awful place. He's writing from this place where he knows that people are being persecuted, and he knows that people are struggling, and he knows that they have still this hope in Jesus. He wants that at the end of the sentence so that they can understand that that's always going to be the response. Even in the worst of circumstances, the response of God to you and the response of you to others is that we have this hope. And it's personal. It's not just 
and intellectual. I can go through the things and talk about Jesus and talk about his perfect life and talk about his death for our sins and talk. I can talk about what it means to me. You see, each of you have a story. A story to tell. A story of your life. A story of how God has been interacting in your life. You see, at Christmas time, we talk about how Jesus came and was named Emmanuel, God with us. And that God with us part means that in your life, in your life story, God's been with you, working with you. Through all the messes and through all the good times, through all the moments when you're angry and all the moments when you're elated with joy, God's been there. And more remarkable than the fact that God's been there is that God has made your life a story that other people need to hear so that they can see the work of His Son. God made us part of the story, made us into the body of Christ so that we could be that story and tell that story. So when someone says to you, be prepared to share, the important thing to focus on is the hope that is within you. Because my friends, I gotta tell you, sharing the message of Jesus and bringing people to faith is not a formula. It's about a relationship. And I can guarantee that there are people in this world who need to hear each of your stories. That's one of the hardest parts about being a preacher, by the way. You get up, and I know darn well that some parts of my story are boring to you. It's okay, you can admit it, all right? There are times when I'm telling you some story from my life and you're going, really, we gotta hear that? It's, it's okay. Because the truth is, there's times when you're telling me your story, and I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> you know, because there's some things I just don't get. Some things I'm not interested in. But, I, but I'll tell you this. In that amazing diversity and variety that God gives to us, there are matches to be made. There are people who are interested in you and people you'll be interested in. There are stories out there, and God's in all those stories that need to be shared because they're your connecting points. They're the places where God has placed you to share your unique and specific hope. And I have to tell you, the amazing thing about being a <coughs> is going out and listening to those stories. Because even when it's not something that's my favorite story, even when it's not as interesting as some of the things I'm interested in, always get to see Jesus in your lives. God working in your lives. That hope that we can see and express and appreciate and enjoy. And so I have to tell you, we're living in times that aren't nearly as oppressive as the times Peter's writing in. But still we hear of stories of people being harmed for their faith and losing their lives for their faith and losing other things for their faith. And so it, it does get scary at times. And that's why we always have to be looking at the fact that it's about that hope. It's about that hope that is within us. It's about that story that Jesus wants to tell through our life in the body of Christ. It's about us being willing to share hope. And so, as we close up this series, as we close up this talk about Life Tree Cafe, a lot of you have asked, what's it all about? And why are we doing this? And what's the program really? And honestly, it boils down to this. You have the opportunity to come and sit in a room that's comfortable and have a cup of coffee and watch a little bit of a video and talk to three people who you may not have ever met. And God will be there. Because God promises that our story brings hope. Because our story is the story of Jesus in our lives. And so we pray. We pray now that God will bless that effort. We'll bring the people who need to hear the hope. Not that's in my heart, but that's in yours. Hope that's part of your story. Hope that's meant to be shared. Amen. Lord God, we pray that you would magnify that hope. That you would magnify our ability to see that hope that you have created in our story of our lives. 
We pray, O Lord, that you would help us to humbly come before you, repentant of the things we've made mistakes about, and know that you pardon abundantly, and then that we would be willing to share. Not share in things that we're frightened about, but share in the hope that we have, the promise that we have in your Son, Jesus. Amen. All right.